Thanks to some of the choices of Donald Trump and Senate and congressional Republicans, the budget's looking pretty bad. Deficit's really high, national debt is skyrocketing, and this is with the party of fiscal discipline, cares about deficits and all of that. And we, the scary thing really though is not the current state of the federal budget deficit, but it's the plan that's now starting to leak on how they're going to fix that problem, which is scarier than the problem itself. But before we get to that solution, let's talk about the, the scale of the problem. On Wednesday, the CBO said that the federal deficit will reach 960 billion for the 2019 fiscal year, which ends at the end of September, and breach the 1 trillion mark in 2020. Now that you should understand is happening against the backdrop backdrop of the longest economic expansion on record and the lowest jobless rate in 50 years. Both are things that are supposed to lower the deficit, not raise it. Especially when you have a party and a president who say, we need to get this down. We can't be those tax and spend liberals. We need to get control of this thing, but it is expanding. Not you know right after the recession, but after the recovery from the recession. Yeah, I, I think there's a farce here. What's and the farce? I, I think the farce is that uh, Donald Trump will make this like a second term issue. Like he'll mm -hmm. wait until after he's reelected to gut the social safety net. I just don't think that that makes any sense. Why is that? Because it's what, a spoiler alert, by the way. But uh, why do you think sorry. so? Um, I was just reading the lower third. My bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, so oh, that's true. In the in the begin, well. What they've done, then we'll bring it back to this first part, which is um, their, their premise that by reducing taxes, they'll grow the economy, and then eventually they will be able to bring in more money from the lower taxes to compensate for the mm -hmm. deficit. What they have done at every turn and what they continue to hint that they will do in the future is to reduce other taxes. Mm -hmm. So they are reducing the means by which they will collect the taxes they say will magically appear mm -hmm. um, so that they can compensate for the deficit. So they're never gonna allow themselves to reduce the deficit. And that leads to my thing, which is it was, and not mine only, which is it was disingenuous from in the first place to say mm -hmm. they really cared about deficits. They just care about corporate interests, yeah. reducing taxes on them so that the rich can keep getting richer and not really incentivize any rate higher wages for employers. Uh, I definitely agree that they were disingenuous about the deficit and they have been for literally decades. They drive it up and then eventually a Democrat gets into office. They you know, spend the whole four or eight years trying to get it down and then gets jacked up against once a Republican gets in. Um, really fast, I don't wanna have a big debate about it, but I am curious. Uh, at, at in sum, you just said they say we're gonna lower taxes, but that jacks up the economy so that we actually make more off of taxes than we would have if the taxes were higher. Uh, do they actually believe that? No. There's, okay, so I we agree. They, I so don't they think definitely they actually, say it. They say that. But what has borne out as a, like after they got their tax cut in every possible way mm -hmm. is they don't really care about literally yeah. anything other than profits. Yeah. And that's it, and that makes okay, sense. I agree. It makes sense that's what they want, that's that's what capitalism is. Mm -hmm. There's nothing necessarily in capitalism that directly says you need to have like this larger responsibility for, yeah. for anyone else. It's more of like a short term goal that they've prioritized over long term responsibility, yeah. which the Democrats actually show up and provide. Yeah, and those arguments, the arguments that you heard you know, before the Bush tax cuts, before the Trump tax cuts, it's always that, Oh, sure, sure, initially doesn't look that great, but long term trickles down or whatever analogy they want to use. And, and what I always stress is take a look at what the bill necessarily does immediately and what they say someday it'll do. And if it always benefits the rich immediately and necessarily and hypothetically benefits the poor, if you start to notice that pattern, maybe learn something from that. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the plan because you believe it's a farce, but. Um, I think that there might be something to it, so we're gonna talk about it. Uh, conservative groups, which largely supported the tax cuts, have pushed Congress to cut future deficits by reducing benefits for federal health care and retirement programs like Medicare and Social Security. Uh, Freedom Works says something must be done soon, and that means taking a hard look at mandatory spending, the root cause of the United States fiscal woes. Um, we will disagree about the root cause of those woes uh, because we know that those tax, the tax plan, which was supposed to in fact raise how much revenue the government gets because it's gonna make the economy so awesome. Well, tax revenues for 2018 and 2019 fell more than $430 billion short of what the budget office predicted they would be in June 2017 before the tax law was approved uh, that December. So you would think that the next time they try to cut taxes, that would be a relevant fact that you'd want to bear in mind. But we know that that's not going to happen because we don't learn anything from these different cycles. And so what has been learned 
president has apparently learned the exact opposite lesson. He's, and this is in the words of the New York Times, has mused in recent days about reducing taxes on investors paying capital gains, a move that's estimated to add another $100 billion to deficits over the next decade. He's also talked about cutting payroll taxes, which could reduce revenues by 75 billion a year, which is more than Bernie Sanders' free public college plan a year, by the way. Just this extra change of taxes, if we didn't do it, we could thereby pay for public college for everybody. And by the way, and again, you never know with Trump, because he says he's gonna do things, then he forgets about it, and then he gets on Greenland or whatever. But he said recently that he has the authority to reduce capital gains taxes unilaterally by himself, no Congress needed, he can just cut those taxes. No, he can't, that is literally- Hashtag drain the swamp, hashtag man of the people. Hashtag reason for Congress, hashtag power of the purse. Yeah, but he says it, I mean, who knows? He also says he can end birthright citizenship, which we'll get back to later in the show. Uh, so, but you think the idea, and by the way, why don't we cut ahead? Why don't we cut ahead to the, mm -hmm. I guess the point is, uh, Senator John Barrasso, who's talked with Trump says that he's talked about this being a second term project, cutting Medicare, possibly social security to help drive down deficits. I have, so I have no doubt that the fiscal, there are people who genuinely believe that after reading Ayn Rand, it opened their <laughs> eyes to this concept that we don't need a social safety net. The social safety net's deep within the heart of the individual, right? <laughs> they believe that and they're <laughs> talking to Trump about that. I just don't see any incentive for Trump to act actually follow through on cutting those things mm -hmm. because especially if it's a second term project cuz let's look at what that second term would be like he wins the presidency he's not going to win the congress he's not going to win control back of congress he'll have every I mean you never know so but we probably never know, but not. he's probably, probably not he's probably not going to win congress back he's not going to the the and the the Republicans aren't gonna get 60 seats in Congress mm -hmm. to overcome any potential obstructionism by the Democrats, right? Mm -hmm. Which so, we would hope would come if he tried to cut Medicare, but we can't necessarily say would. Which we can't necessarily say would, but I don't think the Democrats would be like, yeah, go ahead and cut Medicare and Social Security. So any mm -hmm. downturn in the economy that might result, he can still blame on, on, Republic, on Democratic obstructionism. Mm -hmm. He isn't gonna go actually, like as much as he says, Says it, that's the social security is still the third rail of politics. Mm -hmm. And the people who receive social security are older. And those older people are like Trump fans. And that is one thing that he doesn't need to meddle with, mm -hmm. that he can avoid and still claim this moral victory that, listen, it's the Democrats that are keeping all this stuff from happening. They're keeping all of my initiatives from going. Also, Jerome Bowell, who I might burn at the stake tomorrow, hasn't <laughs> done the right thing with interest rates. Mm -hmm. All of fed. this, yeah. yeah. So that's just that's my that's my take uh, on it. Yeah, you might be right. You know, you made me think about something in terms of like they, they always say in the second term, like they're worried about their legacy, what's gonna happen, everything. Obviously, Obama was worried about a variety of different things. You know, one thing I was thinking of, let's say Trump does get reelected, he gets a second term. Uh, two years in, we start having speculation about who's going to be running on both sides to replace him. Uh, generally, it's in the president's interest to make sure that his party re retains control. I don't think that Trump would care. He doesn't care at all. Like, is he going to spend the last year and a half of his second term, if he gets one, working to make sure that Marco Rubio takes his place? Oh. He doesn't care at all about that. Like, making it about another person. Like, I, God help us if we ever have to see if this is true or not. But I think the Republicans are gonna be shocked at how much he works to undercut their chances of winning after him. Yeah, well, that's probably gonna happen. That would probably happen anyway, that it would just switch mm -hmm. hands regardless, just looking at the last probably. few two term presidents. Yeah. Um, but also, like you see people like like Paul Ryan moving back to DC. Yeah. You see a lot of folks that came in, got their tax cut, prove my point earlier. They're like, I got it, I'm out. Mm -hmm. They leave, and now they're just like, all right. Paul Ryan's not buying in DC, he's renting in DC, mm -hmm. just kind of seeing what the waters are like. Um, and then- but Probably a lot to work folks, as a lobbyist for a few years, Probably I to work as a lobbyist for a few years, but just those folks that held their, no, the ones that got out after the tax cut, cuz they already got their win and the rest is just weird small ball. Mm -hmm. um, they're just waiting for their chance to come back yeah. and seeing what's happening. And then on the left, you see you know, 2024 presidential candidate Gavin Newsom just needling <sighs> the president. <sighs> Can't wait to have that conversation a bunch in the future. Uh, super fast, just one last point to have a little bit of fun. Uh, Trump was, was losing it about the Fed and shining and all that. On Twitter, and there's just one thing I noticed that I have to read. So this is a section of a long rant. He says, the vast amounts of money made and stolen by China from the United States year after year for decades will and must stop. 
Our great American companies are hereby ordered to immediately start looking for an alternative to China, including bringing your companies home and making your products in the USA. And it's just for a guy who has such a tenuous grasp of the English language and reality. Um, like it's this like magical power of words that he thinks that saying hereby ordered means something. Like it made me think of like Michael Scott coming out and yelling, "I declare bankruptcy!" <laughs> like that's <laughs> doesn't mean anything. I you're hereby ordered. Oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna move my factories back then. That's not how so anything dumb. works. It reminds me of Network, the movie Network, mm -hmm. where. Ned Beatty is at the end of a very long table being like, you must stop being the way you are for corporate interests dominate news. Thank you for watching this clip from The Damage Report. For more content from the show and access to TYT Network members only exclusives, go to tyt.com slash Brooke. Wait, no, it's tyt.com slash John. Go to tyt.com slash John to sign up.